bonjour à tous. Merci d'être venus aussi nombreux après cette première pause de la matinée. Donc, parmi tous les événements qu'il y aura cette année, il y a aussi la sortie d'une nouvelle version majeure de PHP et nous ne pouvions pas, ne pas en parler cette année au forum. Et qui de mieux pour en parler que des release managers donc, nous avons donc le plaisir d'accueillir depuis Amsterdam Gabriel. Gabriel est, est très engagé dans l'open source et en plus de PHP, bien sûr, il contribue à des projets comme Doctrine ou Code Sniffer. Donc, merci d'accueillir chaleureusement Gabriel Caruso. Gabriel, your turn. Hello. So. I hope that Maria introduced me uh, very well. I don't speak a word in French, so I'm gonna believe that she did an amazing job. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you guys talking from. Uh, I already saw a bunch of um, gorgeous cities from France uh, in the chat. Can't wait to see you um, once again, once everything that is going on with the word is done. So let's get started because we have a very limited amount of time. Let's get my time ready. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about PHP 8 today. Um, PHP 8 is the new major version of PHP. Um, it's coming out by the end of the year, uh, more precisely on the 26th of November. Uh, so we have a very extensive calendar of testing phase. Uh, we have alphas, uh, we have betas, uh, we have the release candidates that which are the ones that we are going for now. Uh, and then the 26th of November, we're going to have the PHP 8.0.0 version uh, release. Uh, one reminder uh, for 2021, uh, if you are using PHP 7.2, this is not going to be uh, supported anymore. Uh, PHP 7.2 is going to be uh, uh, end of life uh, by the end of the year. Uh, so PHP 7.3 next year is going to be security fixes only. PHP 7.4 and PHP 8 is going to be active support. Uh, one thing about the slides, uh, we're going to share them by the end of the talk. But also, when you get uh, all the slides, they have links. So you can see all the information that I'm sharing with you. Nice microphone. Thank you. Um, so who am I? I'm this guy, uh, which in this photo was pissed off because I was stuck in an airport <laughs> back in Brazil. Uh, I'm a Brazilian, so if you want to practice your Portuguese, uh, I I'm looking for someone to practice my French uh, because I'm studying French. Because I have, I have noticed that you guys have such an amazing, huge community. Uh, and I used to work for a French company, so I can't wait to, uh, to start practicing and uh, using my my French, uh, and I'm living in the Netherlands nowadays. I have moved from Brazil a couple of years ago, uh, and now I'm moving. In, uh, I'm living in the Netherlands. Uh, I work for a company called Server Monkey nowadays, uh, an American company, uh, which we provide the tools for our customers to um, to have feedback, to have customer experience, to have a bunch of stuff. Uh, and by the end of the talk, we're gonna have a survey that I have made uh, using Server Monkey uh, form uh, for you to give me feedback about the stock. Uh, and also, in my spare time, I contribute to open source, uh, as Muriel said. Uh, um, and PHP is, is my biggest project. Uh, bon dia. Good morning, <laughs> Magali. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I, I contribute to open source in my free time. And PHP is my biggest contribution and, and the thing that I'm proud the most. Uh, and also, uh, uh, this is my GitHub handler and my uh, uh, Twitter as well, at Caruso Gabriel. So quick agenda, uh, we're going to talk about the performance improvements of PHP 8. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the new features. PHP 8 has a lot of new features, but unfortunately, we don't have the time. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of changes uh, that we have made to PHP 8. Breaking changes, this is very important because this is what's going to dictate how easy it's going to be for you to update to PHP 8 or not. We're going to talk about some internal changes that we made uh, that probably you're not going to see in your daily work, but it's going to affect some people that maintain libraries, for example. Damien, hello. How are you doing? Um, and also some behind the scenes uh, of PHP 8's development, uh, because this was the first version of PHP that I, I, that I followed the development from beginning to end. Uh, so I have a couple of, of stuff to talk with you. And let's get started, performance improvements. Um, I think the biggest, the most famous, uh, and I think the selling point of PHP 8 is going to be the just-in-time. So just-in-time uh, is something 
very complex, very big, but very important for the language, uh, which is going to improve a lot the performance uh, of your applications. But I want to highlight one thing. If you already have very, very fast APIs, let's say that you have an API that is returning and processing everything in 20, 30, 100 milliseconds, those APIs, they're not going to be affected by just-in-time because just-in-time is focused on have process. So, for example, if you're doing machine learning, if you're doing blockchain, if you're doing, I don't know, image processing with PHP and that those processes are taking like forever, JIT is going to be the one which is going to improve those performance. But for your APIs, um, it's not, it's not going to be that much. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So Damien has read a, a benchmark. Uh, so XZet, uh, which is a stack analyzer tool, got 50% improvement from PHP 7428. This is amazing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any benchmarks because um, benchmarking JIT is not that trivial. Uh, so uh, once we start to have new versions of PHP 80, 801, 802, and then we start to have benchmarks, then for sure we're going to see how important and how big those performance improvements are. Uh, as I said, we have a limited amount of time, and JIT by itself is huge. Uh, and Benoit got me covered. So Benoit, uh, he spoke last year at Forum PHP uh, in French. So it's going to be way easier for you to understand. Uh, he talked about everything about JIT, uh, but I found a, a, a very nice talks in the internet. So I have uh, one from my colleague in Brazil. Um, we have Nikita Popov. We're going to talk about this one uh, in the end of the talk. Dimitri, which was the developer uh, of JIT in Russian. So you have four flavors, four languages that you want to uh, that you want you can see on YouTube, uh, which are dedicated JIT talks. Uh, and then you're going to see why is important, how was developed, how you configured, how you benchmark, uh, what's going to affect your applications, and, and so on. Unfortunately, I don't have the time, but they got me covered. We already have a bunch of content on, on the internet about JIT. Uh, and those were the performance improvements uh, of PHP 8. We have a couple of small ones, uh, but I want to—I don't want to spend my time on it because JIT is the biggest one, and those, those are this. This is where you should focus your, your effort to. Uh, talking about features uh, of PHP 8, we have a lot. We have a bunch of new features on PHP 8. Uh, we have more features than PHP 7.0 uh, uh, in numbers of what we call RFCs, which is the formal processing of bringing something to the PHP. But uh, we are not going to talk about everything. We are going to talk about four um, attributes, union types, the match. Uh, we're going to talk about it and name it arguments. And let's start with union types. So if you're not familiar with union types, um, is basically that math mathematical concept of union. So you have one thing or another combined. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have union types on lines 5, 8, and 14 in properties, methods, and also return types, uh, uh, parameters, and also return types. But as you can see, this is documented. This is not real union types. Uh, we are talking about PHP 7.4. Uh, uh, code here or PHP, whatever. Um, and if you try to use this code and you, you on line 23, you're passing a string. Um, oh, there's another PHP 8 JIT talk. Oh, thank you for, for sharing. Uh, I didn't know that one. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to my list. Uh, so in this example, if you're using, um, uh, uh, this class, it's not gonna work because there's no real validation. Uh, what you can do before PHP 8 is um, sanitize and treat those inputs. So is it an integer? Is it a float? Then if it's not, then you throw an exception. You have seen this, this pattern in a lot of codes, uh, but in PHP 8, you're going to be able to type your code um, with unit types. Properties, arguments, uh, return types, everything that were documented in, in the past now is going to be real type it. And in this example, if we try now to use this class passing a string, we're going to have a native type. We're going to have a native um, uh, error from PHP saying, hey, this was supposed to be either an integer or a float, but you're passing a string. So this is a huge advance for the PHP type system. Um, uh, we're, we have others. We have other uh, uh, additions to union types, uh, other additions to the type system of PHP 8, but union types is the biggest one. Um, one thing, you can use as many union types as you want. 
Uh, here you can see that we have more than five union types in this case, and it works just fine. Of course, you can't repeat because that's going to trigger an error, uh, but you can use it PHP, uh, PHP union types as, as many as you want. But we also have Mixit, uh, which was something that a lot of people were like, why do we need it? Do we need it? Uh, and my opinion on Mixit is uh, we are going to use Mixit as a, as, a, as a bridge. So you bring a PHP 7.4 code where you don't have type at all. You type as Mixit, and then with time, you start to specify those types. So I have three types. I have two types. I have four types. And this is how you improve the typing of your, uh, the type coverage of your code. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I have to take a break on Twitter. Man, twi Twitter was going so crazy with Corona and, and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I still have Twitter. My my DMs are open. So if you just want to message me, uh, go ahead. Uh, Mixit will be any of PHP. Yes, actually any uh, was uh, considered as the other uh, from JavaScript, right? Either we have Mixit or any. But any is not that common on PHP on PHP code, PHP documentation. Mixed was a common one, so we decided to go from Mixed because then people can just uh, convert the annotations that they have uh, to real types. Uh, thanks, Sebastian, for being the one. Sebastian. And that, that's union type. I, I hope you guys are excited as I am about union types because that's going to bring a lot of improvements for the, for, the, for the language. But it's not about just that page bait. We have also match, uh, which is a new um, structure in PHP. And what is a structure? If you take, for example, switch, if, else, uh, for loops, those are structures. And match is a new one. It's been a while since we have added uh, a, a, an extra structure to PHP. But what is match? Um, Match is an alternative to switch because switch has some flaws. Uh, to switch it, PHP switch is not the best thing in the world, um, together with other stuff. But um, what is what are the problems? Uh, this is one problem that we have with switch. On line three, we have value as a string, and on line twelve, we have case two as integer. And PHP consider this thing as um, equal. And switch uses equal um, um, by under the hood, which some people don't think is, is right because switch should be strictly compared. Uh, so using the triple sign instead of the two signs. Um, but you know, changing switch is is not fundamental. is is a very ex, is a is a structure that is used like broadly in, in the ecosystem. So it's not that trivial to change it. Uh, and also, there's another thing. If you pass a, a case that does not exist on PHP's uh, switch, it's is, is just going to throw you a warning instead of saying, hey, you're missing a, a, a default here. So instead of, instead of telling you that, it's going to say, hey, you're just missing the valuable result, which, you know, for the bugging purposes, is not the best thing. Um, so we have match on PHP 8. I like your hoodie. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a PHP 8 hoodie. A special edition. I'm gonna talk about that later on. Um, and then we have a PHP 8 match. Uh, match is again something that we brought from other languages, and um, what is is basically an alternative to switch in terms of is more strict, is faster. Uh, I'm not gonna talk in details how fast it is, but it's faster. Um, and also it covers a lot of the flaws that switch has. So for example, here, now we have value as two and the case of match is also true. And you can echoing out a match. Switch, you need to assign to a variable, do a lot of stuff, and then you do whatever you want with a variable. Match is an expression that you can use together with echo. So is is way better. Uh, and also, if you pass something to match, which does not exist a case, it's going to throw an error. This is something amazing because during development time, you're going to exhaust all the possibilities that you have with your match. Uh, of course, you, you still can have a default, but let's say that you don't you don't want a default. Like, I want to exhaust all the options. PHP now is going to tell you during development time. This is amazing um, to avoid those production errors, they are like small ones. But of course, this tech analyzer tool would caught it, uh, but uh, match is here um, and I think is here to stay. The third one that I wanna talk about today is named arguments. Um, what is named arguments? If you use PHP Storm, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna consider that no one uses PHP Storm. Um, and I'm gonna take this example uh, to illustrate what is named arguments. You, We have a function called array filter in PHP. 
which is very trivial to understand if you walk through this code. You have an array of items. You want to filter the items on line seven, which are integers. And then on line nine, we have uh, the two items of those th that array that are integers. And it's not that difficult to understand. You have one argument, two arguments. But then you have a function that we don't use daily, but at least I don't use daily, which is array fill. You have two, three, and PHP. Like, what the hell those arguments are supposed to say? Imagine, uh, this is the output, by the way. Uh, you have like two PHP, three PHP, four PHP. So if you try to understand two, is the index that is going to start the array. Tree is the number of items of that array. And PHP is the value of all those items. But imagine if you could do this. Starting key as two, the number of items in that array as three, and then you have the value of each argument as PHP. It's way easier to understand, right? So you have... Um, um, this in PHP, we, we're going to name uh, all the arguments of our um, uh, functions, methods, and everything so you can document your code and it's going to prove the readability uh, of it. Uh, named arguments or anonymous arguments? Uh, named arguments. Anonymous arguments, I never heard about that. If you can uh, say it later on what it is, I have never heard the name, sorry. Uh, so moving on, uh, it's not just about functions, it's also about um, 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 classes, arguments, methods, and everything. Um, in this example, we have string name and string age, works just fine. In this case, we have an interface and we have an implementation of this interface. And if you take a look at line five and line 10, we have renamed, instead of name, we have name as full name. So what are we going to use? PHP is going to follow the rename. So if you rename an, a class, uh, a class, um, sorry, a methods uh, parameter, it's going to force you to use the renaming one. If you didn't know that PHP allows you to do that, don't do it because it's not a common a best practice. But if you do, uh, it's going to follow the rename. Um, naming arguments is very good for Booleans uh, uh, um, um, constructors. If they're good or not, this is another discussion. But for example, in line 14, you have new user, true, false, and no. Like, how the hell? Wh what, what true means? What false means? What does new mean? And if you have named arguments, it's way easier to understand. I have a user, which is an admin, which is not active, and they are not, um, um, it has no rules. So this is easier to understand when you have named arguments. And this is what PHP 8 is bringing. Um, I have a slide here which uh, covers all the uh, permutations uh, that you can have with naming arguments. You can have in random order. This is the biggest um, um, uh, advantage of naming arguments. You don't need to follow the order of the arguments anymore. Uh, if you have optional arguments, you can specify one or another. In this case, the to both arguments, one and two, they are optionals. Uh, but you just want to change the value of the argument two. So this is easier. Uh, with uh, naming arguments. This is actually possible just because of naming arguments. And you can skip. Um, uh, if you start, if you don't start with name arguments and then later on you decided to use name arguments, um, um, uh, for example, here on line 13, this is allowed. But if you decided not to use and then you use it again on argument two, but then on argument three, you don't use it, this is not allowed because PHP lost tracks, uh, lost track uh, on how to, to, analyze this thing. So you need to follow either everything or don't skip it because it's not going to work. Uh, and that's named arguments. Uh, couple of questions. Uh, um, can we mix it, name arguments and normal arguments in some methods of call? Yeah, this is what I have just showed here. Um, and then the last uh, feature that I want to talk about PHP 8 mm -hmm. is attributes. And you probably know attributes as annotations decorators, and a bunch of other names that other languages have. But in PHP, it's going to call attributes. And attributes uh, see it as annotations or something that gives your class, your properties, your variables, uh, uh, properties, attributes. Um, and here we have an example with doctrine. So this class is an entity, and both properties they are uh, columns. And the first uh, and the pro and the property ID is uh, is an ID. You can do that with annotations nowadays, uh, but think that every single project that wants to have this 
mechanism needs to implement its own um, an annotation or attributes library. Doctrine has a famous one, Doctrine Annotations. Uh, if, if you work with serialization, if you work with Symfony, all those, all those parts, they have their own implementation. So what if we could centralize that in PHP? And PHP 8 brought that. Um, uh, so just a, a quick disclaimer. Annotations uh, is something that we use to document our code and attributes is something that we use to give um, attributes to classes, to properties, and, and so on. Um, and then on page P8, we're gonna have something like this. It's very similar to annotations, but are not annotations, they're attributes. And this is gonna be checked by PHP's engine, by PHP source code. So now we're, we can cache, we can validate, we can um, uh, extend, we can implement, we can do a lot of stuff with, with attributes. And it's very similar. Um, um, this is a this is the syntax that was chosen. Um, uh, this is the Rust-like syntax, uh, but it's very similar to what we have nowadays. And it's gonna work on PHP 8. We're gonna have attributes native. Uh, this is gonna help a lot. Uh, some projects that have custom implementations, uh, some frameworks, and so on. We're gonna have caching optimization, as I said. Uh, and annotations are gonna be for documentation, and attributes are gonna be for attributes themselves. One click disclaimer and one important thing attributes need to be supported by your uh, library framework or whatever you're using. PHP is not gonna convert automatically annotations to attributes. Your projects need to support that. There's a whole section in the RFC document uh, that proposed this thing, how you can implement that using reflection. Um, and there you go. These are the four biggest features of um, uh, of HP. Yeah, Python, uh, Python even goes even further and allows you to rename internally or, or externally, uh, but HP only allows you to use the, um, um, uh, the name that you give to the API, uh, but that's something for later on. Uh, some changes, uh, it's not breaking changes, but are changes to PHP 8. Um, previously, if you try to use throw as an expression, you couldn't. Now on PHP 8, you can. So know all those ifs. If something is not set, throw an exception. Now you can do. I can either have the variable nullable or throw an exception. You can have uh, exceptions on short closures and a lot of other things that before PHP 8, you weren't allowed. Uh, but now we have made this change to throw, uh, which is not a breaking change. It's just a change. And it's going to simplify a lot of code um, from um, from a lot of stuff. Uh, can you mix comment and attribute? Yes, that's that's allowed. Uh, but keep in mind that if your project does not support attributes, it's not gonna work. Uh, another small change to PHP 8. Uh, some people have uh, very specific exceptions uh, and they use exception domains and they don't need the exception uh, the exception object because this is handler by the error handling by some some upstream project that is taking care of exceptions so they don't need the variable now this is allowed you can catch an exception without passing the variable and then just throw whatever you need this is a small change but people ask we have made it is there one important change this is not a breaking change but this is a deprecation warning if you take a look at line 3 we have something that is not right, which is an optional argument followed by a required argument. It's not because PHP allows you to do that that you should. This is not right. If you take all the books, everything about dependency injection, about um, uh, computer science and everything, you should first declare your required arguments and then your optional arguments because this is how you treat an API, right? but PHP allow you to do that. So we have some folks out there which have done this in the past, uh, but this is deprecated on PHP 8 and it's gonna be removed all the way on PHP 9. So you're gonna have a couple of versions to fix this. Uh, don't, don't get crazy if you see these deprecation warnings at first. These are just deprecation warnings, but take, take in consideration that you need to fix this for PHP 9 in the future. This is gonna be removed in a future major version of PHP, but this is deprecated on PHP 8, uh, as I said. This is a deprecation warning. Now the important break compatibility changes, and this is how you're gonna see how difficult it's gonna be for you to upgrade your code from your whatever version you're using to PHP 8. First one, 
everything that was removed or that it was deprecated, sorry, in the PHP 1, 0, 2, 3, and 4 is now removed on PHP 8. So if you were using anything that was deprecated on PHP 7, in PHP is not going to work because it's removed. There is an extensive list here. You can check the official pull request on the PHP source code. It's open source. There is everything. But just keep in mind, if you're using something that was deprecated, now it's removed. Simple as that. Uh, this one, um, apart from being a release manager of PHP 8, I also did some contributions to PHP 8, and this was my one. Sorry, I break your code, but this uh, this example illustrates uh, something that was allowed in the in the past, but now PHP is not going to be allowed anymore. Magic methods of PHP, in the past, they weren't being validated how you type them. So in the past, you could have such thing as a class foo with a method true string returning a boolean. This is not right. It's supposed to return a string. Um, so on PHP 8, we're going to uh, type and check. We're going to check uh, if you type your magic method. It's not required. It's not mandatory. If you don't use types with PHP, you can still don't use them. But if you use, we're going to check them. There's an extensive list on this RFC, uh, which is the formal document that we propose to PHP internals uh, to change PHP. Uh, and we are gonna, uh, you you're gonna have all the lists with all the changes that you you need to make um, to uh, to make your magic methods work. Um, this one, I, I hope you agree with me that dividing an empty array with an array that is 42 makes zero sense. In the past, PHP would return you zero, one, or our number, uh, but you know it doesn't make sense. So we have. Remove it is not working anymore on PHP 8. The same way, if you try to increment a class, if you try to implement an array, uh, that's not going to work. Okay, this is remove on PHP 8. Um, stack analyzer tools, um, for example, Damien's one, uh, which is exact, um, PHP stun, Poisson, Fan, all the stack analyzer tools that we have in the PHP ecosystem. All of them were already reporting this uh, in previous versions. So if you're using Stack Analyzer 2, don't worry about these changes because it's not going to affect you. Uh, and last but not least, this is the biggest breaking change of PHP 8, uh, more specific on line 6. Uh, there, there is a whole meme in the community saying 0 is equal to full. Yeah, for PHP in the past, it was true, but now it's not true any longer. Okay, uh, zero is not a is is not equal to a string in any sense, um, uh, except uh, except for uh, uh, integers and floats because that makes sense. But like empty strings, strings with stuff, this is true in the past, but now is false, and this is going to break a lot of code. But again, um, don't use double sign. Okay, use the triple sign, um, have types in your code. This is this is going to make your life way easier. But if you do use the, the double equal sign, pay attention, because if you're doing this kind of comparison, it's going to break your code. Uh, and the last one, uh, which I don't think should impact a lot of people, but is, an, is a breaking change. Uh, PHP in the past would cast uh, uh, a string, which is starts with a number to just the number. So this is why 42 is equal to 42 full, because PHP casts, 42 full to 44, 42. Um, but this is not no longer true, and this is going to break your code uh, if you have such thing. Okay. Um, those are the breaking changes. Um, uh, some internal changes that I want to share with you. Uh, I'm going to hurry uh, with these slides because I'm getting out of time. Um, but there is an API on PHP called Reflection, which basically tells you everything that you want to know about um, uh, a function, a class, a property of a class, um, um, and so on. Before PHP 8, if you try, for example, uh, to reflect the function array filter, you would have no type information at all. Like, what is the type of the first argument? What is the type of the second argument? What is the return type of array filter? Previously, none, zero. You had no information. On PHP 8, you're going to have shit tons of information. Every single um, uh, internal function now is typed. This was a forced task. It was amazing. It was painful to add support to everything. But if you have, for example, uh, a library which is using reflection and you were demanding these things, 
uh, now is uh, now is 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 in the source code of PHP eight. Uh, there are a couple of projects that were uh, that depends on this, uh, and there's a project from JetBrains uh, which is specifically for this thing, um, and probably they're going to deprecate this project in the future because now we have this information on PHP eight source code, um, uh, and then you can check it out the, the slides later. But it's, it's basically uh, a, a, a API that PHP has, uh, which is reflection, which tells you a lot of information. Uh, again, this is an internal change. It, probably you're not gonna use this thing in your daily work, but if you maintain a library that depends on reflection, you're gonna, you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking with you that maintains a library that depends on reflection and you don't have type information. Now you have, it's such an improvement for the language. Was huge, was painful, was long, uh, but we made it, it's there. And the last topic, I have two minutes to talk about this thing. Um, which are the behind the scenes of PHP 8. We have a couple of people which is behind PHP. Um, uh, as I got introduced, I'm one of the release managers of PHP 8. Uh, this is the PHP 8 logo, by the way. Uh, a lot of people are asking if this is the official one. Yes, this is the official one, which was made by a French, uh, which I forgot his name, if someone remembers his name, Vincent. Vincent uh, was the creator um, of the elephants, the designer of the elephants, uh, and he also designed the PHP 7 logo, and he also designed the PHP 8 logo. So uh, um, this is why I have this hoodie. Uh, so we have two release managers, Sarah and I. Uh, we are responsible for taking care of the PHP 8 um, uh, release cycle, making sure that every four weeks we have a new release of PHP. We, we need to make sure that everything is working, everything is buildable, uh, everything is free of bugs, which we can't, but um, I ran out of time. Um, so let's hurry up. Uh, I just give. Uh, I just want to give a couple of shout outs uh, to some contributors of the PHP source code, uh, which are Dimitri, he was the creator of JIT. Nikita, he's working on behalf of JetBrains in the source code. He has done more than 10 RFCs, which is amazing. Um, we have Christoph, uh, which is doing the bridge between Microsoft and PHP. Um, uh, so if you run PHP on Windows, this is the one that is is, is allowing you to do that. Uh, we have Jacob with his taking care of the FPM uh, um, uh, SAP of PHP. Uh, we have Matteo, which organized the PHP day in Italy. He's taking care of the PDO extension. We have Tyson, which works for FAN, uh, which is a stack analyzer too. Um, uh, and he's, he's bringing a lot of stuff to the PHP source code. We have these two gentlemen that they were the ones that helped us uh, to do the reflection uh, for stack animation. We imagine changing 2000 plus functions in a language to have type information. So these two, we work around the clock to have that information add to the source code. Those are the ones that helped you. Um, uh, all these uh, all these names they are clickable. You can go to their GitHub and also they have GitHub sponsors. So if you want to sponsor PHP to keep evolving. Here's an example of uh, how you should do that. We have new contributors. Uh, Alex was the first African contributor that we had, uh, uh, hence in the fact that PHP is an open source global language. He was the first African contributor that we had. Uh, we have Elijah, uh, which he is uh, not a maintainer, but a contributor to PHP Stun. He also made a lot of contributions to PHP 8. For example, Match, he was the one that created Match. So if you wanna thank him, um, He's the one. And we also have some famous people. Uh, Benjamin from Doctrine, he was the one that created attributes. And we have Nicholas, which is a French one, um, which he is the member of Symfony. He also contributes to PHP 8. He, he made an interface called Stringable. Um, uh, and yeah, we have, we have even the community, uh, uh, Doctrine, Symfony, Laravel, whatever, uh, uh, give, giving back to PHP and improving PHP source code. So this is, this is huge, this is amazing. Um, unfortunately, I need to rush because we have very limited amount of time, but um, uh, I'm gonna share these slides with you. Uh, there's a whole uh, document that I have created, uh, which is everything that I have found in terms of uh, um, 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 reference for PHP 8. All the official references, blog posts around there, all the talks that I have found, um, uh, all the RFCs, every, everything that has changed inside of PHP source code, you're gonna have the links here. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you need to go through if you wanna support PHP 8. Um, but yeah, PHP 8 is here, PHP 8 is there. 
PHP. It's going to come on the end of November. I'm so excited. It's a new major version of PHP. It's a new cycle. It's a new era, uh, as I like to say, uh, for PHP 8. PHP 8 is coming. And uh, it's here to stay. It's here to prove that PHP is not dead. PHP is evolving. PHP is growing. PHP is going to become a huge language in the future. I can't wait um, uh, to PHP to, to grow even more. Uh, and that's it. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the time to talk about everything. Uh, so please go check it out the slides. Um, uh, we have a bunch of reference uh, that you can uh, that you can see. Uh, and one thing that I ask you, uh, give me feedback. Uh, if I can click this link as I can. Um, uh, because uh, with this feedback, I can improve uh, my talk for the next conference. And uh, that's it. Muriel, if you can jump in and help me with the questions uh, to see if I have something, uh, if I haven't forgotten anything. Thank you, Magali. Thank you, Gabriel, for your talk. There is a lot of questions. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of questions. Uh, uh, we have uh, four minutes, so... Okay, the, so the one let's the go... Vote, I think. Yeah, let's see. Okay, there are some ones that are easy. Will generics be supported at some point? At some point, yes, it will be supported. But we don't have a time frame. We don't have a, um, um, a release, um, a roadmap for PHP. So at some point, yes, it's going to be supported. But it's 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 complicated. It's, it's not trivial. So um, um, it, it's complicated. Let's let's put it that way. Um, uh, -na 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 Are any plans of having nested attributes for PHP 8.1? This is a discussion that is happening today tomorrow uh, happening yesterday. Uh, this is a, a very recent discussion, which is how nested attributes are gonna work. I don't know if we're gonna have in PHP 8.1, if we're gonna have on PHP 8.2, if we are not gonna have, this is very, very recent. I have no idea. My opinion, we're gonna have in PHP 8.1 because this was something that uh, we missed it on the PHP 8 uh, release, uh, but on PHP 8.1, probably uh, we're gonna have. Uh, there's a very interesting question that I want to talk. Uh, Microsoft quit the release team of PHP. What is the future of PHP for Windows? In a nutshell, this is not true. It sounded that Microsoft quit PHP, but this is not true. What happened was we need to build PHP to Microsoft, to, to Windows. And we need Microsoft machines to do that job. This is the only thing that Microsoft said that is not going to happen. They are not going to provide the machines for us internals to build PHP. What does it mean? Means that we just need to switch to another provider, and they have an official provider uh, from Microsoft, which is Microsoft Azure, uh, which is Microsoft Pipelines, Microsoft Azure Pipelines. That I have a, they have a bunch of products nowadays. Uh, so this is what changes. Microsoft is not going to provide the machines for the PHP team to help us build. So we are on our own, but we have already started out. Hence the fact that PHP 8 has a, 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 a Windows build uh, and this is, this, is, this, is, this is working. So no, Microsoft haven't quit PHP. Microsoft is just not supporting PHP's builds. This is the only thing that has changed. Um, do I have time to answer another one quickly? Yeah, yes, you have time. Uh, -na 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 uh, can match be used in comparison uh, with instance of? Um, I don't know. Match be used in comparison with instance of? Um, no. Oh, you, you're trying to use it as an expression. So uh, something is instance of. Probably you can because match is an, is an expression. So you can combine match with something else. So I think you can. Uh, you can test it out and tell me later. I have no idea. Um, will match support block of code like switch? Yes, this is the RFC. Uh, it's allowed. Nothing has changed there. Um, there's, I think there's only one. No, there's another one. I'm, I'm, I'm skipping the mixed one because that's going to, you know, trigger uh, a couple of questions that I don't want to go to. Uh, how does PHP attributes need to be declared after PHP doc blocks? If not, we would confuse the PHP parser. How does PHP attributes need to be declared after PHP doc blocks? Um, you need to have, um, 
you can have, as I said, you can have both documentation, attribute annotations, and you can have attributes. PHP PHP parser understand what is an annotation, what is a parse, what is an attribute. PHP parser understand that. What you can't have is one thing inside another. So let's say that you have attributes inside of annotation. That's not going to work. But if you have a block of annotation, if you have a block of attributes, that's going to work just fine. PHP parser knows how to handle that. Um, but you can test it out uh, and see if, if, if I'm missing something. But if I understood your question, um, is no, it's not going to be a problem for the PHP parser. Um, are there tools to analyze projects code and uh, assess readiness and suggestions for PHP 8? Uh, yes, Stat Analyzer tools, they are already doing its jobs uh, to help you migrate to PHP 8, as I said. So, for example, if you have uh, something, an array dividing by another array, that doesn't make sense, and a stack analyzer tool is going to let you know. Uh, but there is a project uh, that I used to be part of that project that I'm, I'm not working there anymore. Um, what is the name? Rector. Uh, I'm going to dump the link on the chat later on, uh, but it's called Hector. R e c t o r, uh, which is um, um, which is a tool that helps you migrate your code. So you have a bunch of code goes to the rector tool, and then it its its output is a new code that works in the new major version. Uh, or uh, if you want to migrate PHP unit, Symfony, all the stuff. Uh, these are the tools that I know uh, that allow you to migrate to PHP eight, uh, but also polyfies. So you have, for example, the Symfony polyfy, uh, which gives you uh, uh, classes, functions, or something which allows you to start to use PHP 8 feature, feature in lower versions. Uh, these are the only two tools uh, that I know that... Are the, oh, we have a bunch of tools. They're, those are the only two that I know they are going to help you to migrate to PHP 8. Uh, there is the last question that I want to answer, uh, which is Alex's question that I was uh, not trying to, but I, 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 I'm going to try to reply to. Uh, what is the point of Inforks and Mixed Type instead of nothing? Um, so this is this is this is a very uh, um, complicated question. This was a question that we made to the the developer of the Mixed RFC. Having no type and have mixed types this is different. Why is different? When you have no type in your parameter, in your return function, whatever, you have no type information at all. Nothing. You have zero information. When you have mixed, you have mixed. You have array, integer, float, object, array. You have all the information. So when you say that something has no type, is different when saying that it has all the types mixed. But then you're going to say, Gabriel, my, my, I, I use mixed, but I don't have support to all the, all the, all the, all the types. It's just uh, Boolean, integer, and string. There we go. You can already narrow, narrow, narrow down uh, your type information of your function uh, by avoiding mixed. So if you are using mixed, you're declaring that your thing have all the types instead of having no type declaration, which is um, um, nothing. So nothing versus mistakes has it's different. I know that it sounds like no, but it does. Having no information is different than have mixed it because no information means you have, you can accept anything that goes through mixed. There is no information at all, but having mixed means I am signing that this method, this function, this parameter accepts everything. Uh, I know that the mix it is not the best word, should be any. I, I asked them to, to put any, but you know, this is a, this is a democracy. This was voted uh, because any gives a better idea that I accept any type information instead of having no type information at all. I hope I could answer your question. It's a very complicated uh, question, um, but yeah, it's there. Uh, let's see the chat if we have something that I have. Uh, uh, Hector, so thanks, George, uh, for sharing. Yeah, that's the tool that I talk. Um, uh, it's a very amazing tool. Um, um, uh, what are the answer? The, what 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 was the answer for the generic type? Uh, so, Anthony, generic, yes, is going to be supported in future versions of PHP, but 
we don't have no we have no idea we have no um, predictions we have no deadline we have no roadmap because generic in php source code is not an easy thing to implement you need to change a lot of code uh, in order to implement this thing i know that some people are working on generics I don't know if it's going to be for 8.1. I don't know if it's going to be for 8.2. I don't know if it's going to be for PHP 9. But it's going to, at some point, we're going to have generics. We have proof by a proof of concept implementation that it works. It's possible to have generics in PHP source code. But it's not that trivial. Uh, as I said, we need to change a lot of code in PHP source code to have it. Uh, so stay tuned. We're going to have it at some point. And uh, that's it. Now I'm done because I have... Yeah, to stop you. The next talk will uh, will begin uh, or has begun, in fact. Um, but you can stay in the chat if you want, or uh, talk to Gabriel on the work adventure. Cool. So if you have more questions, and uh, bye. Okay, so there is a new question. Is it possible to declare union types? Example number. Mm, start live answer. Oh, I can I can do that. Um, so uh, Jan, is it possible to declare union types? Uh, for example, numbers, uh, which is an alias for integer float. No, this is not allowed. Um, actually, I have no idea why this is not allowed. But no, this is not allowed on PHP. Uh, PHP is eight. Thank you, everyone. Do we have any more questions? Do I have an answer? Makes it have an answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, there you go. So thank you, and see ya. Bye bye. <laughs>